Hello, Joel Tavman here from Golf Monthly, and we're at West Hill on the range. It's a very exciting day because we are testing the new Callaway Rogue irons. Now, there's four irons in this new range. You can see I've got three of them here. Before we delve into the different models and what type of golfer they're going to be aimed at, let's talk about the technology that is common in all of them. Callaway really wanted to focus on still being able to provide ball speed and distance, but also through better improved sound and feel. And the way they've done that is through using something called urethane microspheres. Essentially, when you have a thin club face, a common complaint of that is that the feel and sound is loud, it's quite harsh. So the Callaway really wanted to rectify that with this special material called urethane microspheres. It fills the cavity behind the face. Essentially, it still dampens the feel and sound, but allows the face to be still be nice and flexible doesn't slow the face down, doesn't slow the ball speed down. So you, in theory, get the best of both worlds. And like I said, there's four irons within the range. The one I haven't got is the Rogue W. Now the W stands for women's. It's mainly a club designed for lady golfers and senior golfers. It's more lightweight. It's gonna help get the ball a lot in the air a lot more easily. The three I've got here are the Rogue Standard, the Rogue Pro, and the Rogue X. Now the Rogue Standard, is kind of giving golfers a little bit of everything. It's gonna give you distance and forgiveness. The Rogue Pro is gonna give you the same type of performance benefits, but in a more compact profile. And the Rogue X differs to the other two in that it's a slightly longer club. It's got much stronger lofts and it's designed for out and out distance, uh, predominantly for those with slower swing speeds. So that's the top line technology. What about the looks of these three irons? Well, let's start with the Rogue iron. Now the Rogue has got a slightly darker finish to the Rogue Pro. It's as a game improvement iron, you would expect it to have a little bit of offset there. It's got quite a thin top line. It's very, very confident in spiraling down by the ball. You've got the double white score line on the bottom, which definitely helps with alignment. And what I would say is that the Rogue actually differs quite strongly to the Rogue Pro. The Rogue Pro is a very different looking iron, often with standard and pro models. There's not too much between it. Often the Pro is just slightly smaller, whereas the Rogue Pro really does have a look all of its own. It's got a much lighter finish, and it's got a much cleaner look down by the ball. It's obviously got less offset, thinner top line, all those kind of things, but it's got a much cleaner look. There's no double white score line. It's a much more traditional looking iron. I think it's definitely going to appeal to the low to mid handicapper. Moving on to the Rogue X now, as I mentioned before, this is uh, a stronger lofted club. It's designed more for distance. And as you'd expect, I've got the five iron here. Uh, this is even chunkier steel than the Rogue iron. You've got a wider sole here, actually on this five iron, the back of the sole is visible behind the top line. So it's a very large conference inspired looking iron. You can clearly see it's designed for maximum distance and forgiveness, uh, and it looks like it's gonna deliver that. So I've been testing all three of these clubs. Samples at this stage were limited, and Callaway have been able to send us a six iron in the Rogue and the Rogue Pro, and a five iron in the Rogue X. Now let's talk about the lofts of these clubs. They would suggest that these irons are built from predominantly for distance. The Rogue Pro is 27 degrees on the six iron, the Rogue is 26 degrees, and the Rogue X five iron is 21 degrees. So apologies, we can't give you a like for like test, but hopefully the performance numbers that we've got should give you an insight into exactly how these irons perform. So we talked about the looks, let's talk about the numbers. We've got some launch monitor data to share with you. We've been hitting them uh, in indoor conditions uh, with premium golf balls, as well as on the range here today using our GC2 launch monitor. So hopefully we've got enough uh, feedback and data to give you uh, a verdict of how the clubs perform. So let's delve into the numbers and see how they went. So let's look at the numbers then for the three rogue irons I've got here. Just testing them in the standard stiff shaft offerings. Let's start with the rogue iron, the standard model looking at the numbers here. So you can see we've got some really good ball speed here, 128 miles an hour, launching really high at 19 and a half degrees. Spin, as you might expect, don't forget this is a six iron, but it's still spinning under 4,000 RPM, so very low spin, contributing to some very impressive carry distances, 195 yards on average, which is obviously very, very long indeed, a lot longer than I hit my current irons, which are obviously more traditionally lofted. Some pretty good stopping power there, looking at the descent angle of 47 degrees. So it still looks like you're gonna stop the ball in the air, especially with the peak height of 39 yards. You know, it's getting the ball up in the air nice and easily. Let's see how that compares with the Rogue Pro, which like I said, is a degree weaker in loft. You can see the ball speed came down a lot more than I was expecting actually, 123 miles an hour with the Rogue Pro. 
uh, but still produced an average carry of 189 yards, which is still very impressive. Surprising the ball flight was lower and the spin was lower. I would actually expect the spin to come up slightly because the loft is slightly higher, but you can see it's still nice and low there, 3.7. Um, lower launch angle as well. Again, not quite what you expect, but don't forget the, the Rogue iron is uh, a little bit of a larger iron. It's got a wider sole, perhaps potentially a lower CG in, in theory, getting the ball up in the air a little bit easier. Very happy with the consistency of the numbers, especially with the Rogue Pro. You can see here, uh, distances range from 186 to 191. So that's really, really consistent. Front to back dispersion of five yards is very impressive. You can see it's slightly bigger on the Rogue iron. It goes from 191 to 201, so 10 yards with the Rogue iron itself. So that's the, that's the Rogue and the Rogue Pro. Let's move on to the Rogue X5 iron. And the numbers I got here were pretty staggering, to be honest. Ball speed jumped up to 133 miles an hour. Uh, look at that spin number. It's spinning at 2,500 RPM. Uh, it's average carry of 216 yards with a 5 iron and it's peaking at 31 yards. I mean, let's face it, essentially this Rogue X5 iron is a driving iron for me. You can clearly see it's built for distance. It gets the ball up in the air okay. Uh, launching at 16 degrees for a 5 iron is actually not bad. But it's, it's like I said, it's obvious this club is designed for speed and if you're a slow swing speed player that lacks distance the Rogue X is, certainly looks like it's going to deliver that through low spin, fast ball speed and a relatively high launch. So there you have it that's how these three Rogue irons perform. Some really interesting numbers there from the GC2. What do you think? For me I would say that the Rogue iron itself is going to appeal to a wide spectrum of players but I'd say still it's aimed at the mid to high hand capper because it is geared primarily for distance and forgiveness. Obviously we've not talked about the feel and sound of these clubs so let's talk about that. The feel and sound was very good, it felt very powerful, very lively but it still wasn't overly loud. Obviously with uh, game improvement distance clubs the irons tend to be quite loud and harsh. I would say that's definitely been reduced here certainly in irons uh, from previous years that I've tested from Callaway, the feel and sound is more muted, it's more classic, and definitely more appealing to a wider range of players. The Rogue Pro is definitely my favourite. For me, the other irons, if arguably, went too far, whereas the Rogue Pro was more in the ballpark of a distance I want a six iron to go to. It's more compact, it's slimmer, it's, it's got a much more pleasing finish on it for me. I like that lighter finish and more traditional look to it. Uh, also the lack of offset on it, I think that's going to appeal to the mid to low handicappers. But what I like about that club is it gave me really consistent distances and it was surprisingly forgiving across a wide area on the face. So I really enjoyed that Rogue Pro iron. I could definitely see myself playing that at some point. And finally the Rogue X, what can I say about the Rogue X? I mean this club is an absolute distance machine but it was always going to be uh, those lofts are really strong. In fact I looked around on the internet, I think it is the strongest lofted 5 iron out there on the market. It's a degree, half a degree stronger than the TaylorMade M4 5 iron. So definitely built for out and out distance. But if you're a slow swinger who lacks distance, the Rogue X is potentially a club for you because it really is going to deliver in the area of performance that you're looking for. For me, I mean, I could definitely play this club as a hybrid replacement because it goes nearly as far as my hybrid. Uh, it gets the ball up in the air pretty easily, gives me some really good distance. Um, and also I feel like I can shape it pretty easily as well. Obviously with the offset there I did tend to miss it fairly to the left. You can see the dispersion is a little bit to the, to the left bias but um, actually surprisingly impressed with how easy were. they all were to hit but especially that Rogue X iron. You could put a pretty bad swing on it and still hit a fairly good shot with the Rogue X. Okay, so that's my take on the three Callaway Rogue irons. I hope you found that review helpful. Hopefully it gave you a bit of insight into how each three irons performed and the similarities and differences between the three irons. As always, my advice would always be go and try them out, go and get custom fitted, see which one is gonna work best for your game. As I've said before, the Rogue X is built for out and out distance and forgiveness. The Rogue Pro is designed more for traditional distances and the softer sound and feel was the Rogue standard iron is somewhere in between those two. So thanks for watching. Make sure you visit the Golf Monthly website, Golf Monthly YouTube channel for all our other videos of reviews of Callaway products and the products that they're up against in 2018. But for now, from West Hill, it's goodbye.